Good. Well, welcome guys to our general session on Thursday. It's kind of a, a quaint ladies club this morning. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think when it's a small group like this, it's always great to talk about whatever is currently happening in your business and um, what you would like to, to talk about or share. Um, I just, for me, I'll share with you guys. Um, I was a little startled to recognize we really only have about, um, let's see, November, December. There's really only about 80 more days to the year, 84 more days, something like that. 74, something like some low number left to the year. And in looking at that, I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to map out like what I'm going to do to be the most effective each day in the year. And then rolling into 2022 is really, you know, getting that vision for what the next year is going to be like, getting the plan together. Um, you know, what do we need to do now to really prepare for it? Um, marketing always seems to create a push about six weeks after, uh, you know, you've done it. So what marketing needs to be planned out right now and just getting all of that aligned, um, planning for me is one of those things that I just like everybody else, even though I talk a lot about like the importance of it, just like everybody else, like I avoid it. And then once I sit down and I do it, it is such a relief. It feels so amazing to have a plan and to know what I'm going to do every single day. Um, and we have a lot going on. John and I are, hey, Gail. Um, John and I, you know, we've got a, a lot of our business stuff. Um, this month, this weekend, we've got Trinity's birthday. We have a trip at the end of October. We're looking to buy a house in Florida. So we're going to be heading down to Florida to um, meet with the realtor sometime in November. Um, and then we're rolling right into Thanksgiving. Then we've got a couple of weeks before Christmas, then New Year's, right? And it's like really looking at what that plan looks like. I think this time of year is so important because it's easy to get very distracted, very distracted with what, you know, what's happening in the world. Uh, that's, that's one thing. Um, very distracted with what's happening with our families and our friends and all that stuff in the holidays. Um, and not that we don't want to enjoy ourselves like fully uh, for whatever holidays you're celebrating in your country. And, you know, according to uh, your religion and stuff like that, we want to have all those great experiences, but at the same time, like Thanksgiving doesn't need to take, you know, 10 days. Um, and sometimes it can, you know, if we're like, oh, well, today I'm going to plan it out and tomorrow I'm going to go shopping and Wednesday I'm going to hunt for recipes and Thursday I'm going to start food prep and Friday I'm going to do this, right? It can really like drag out into this really long thing. And same thing with Christmas, right? When we get into the holidays, like, people spend weeks, weeks shopping. Um, and I spent like an hour and a half online doing my Christmas shopping. Like I'm done. <laughs> so <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay is done too. I'm done. Right. Like it's October. I don't want to think about it again. The kid has her presents. My husband has his presents. The family's got their stuff coming and that's it. You know, we're done for the done for the holidays. Plus, I think right now it's good to do that in advance anyways, because there's all these um, shortages that are happening and shortages just create more time because then you end up going from one store to the next door to the next door, trying to find what you're, what you're looking for. Right. Um, so even planning in that way can make a big difference. So getting out your um, planner, I recommend a very specific planner called the law of attraction planner. Um, I love it. I know Emma uses it. I think you still use it, Emma. Uh, Lindsay uses it. And, you know, the reason I use that planner in particular is because it gives me my whole week in view. So I'm able to see everything that's happening during the week so that I can plan out blocks of time to actually get stuff done. And then if I know that I have like this epic to-do list, right, I might have like 40 things on my to-do list, which 
right now is very real to me because we're like revamping my brand. We're revamping our funnels. We moved to a new system. I'm hiring a new VA, right? There's a lot on my to-do list. I can chunk that out in times across my calendar. And then when I do take time off, like on the 28th, we're going to South Dakota, which is random, but my daughter loves this online um, crew on YouTube called Dude Perfect. And they do all these, you know, crazy experiments and stuff. And she really wanted to go see them. So they're, you know, of course they weren't coming to Phoenix, which is the fourth largest city in the United States with 5 million people, right? Of course they wouldn't be coming here. They're going to like all these other random cities like Wichita and uh, Sioux Falls. And, you know, so we're going to South Dakota and um, we got VIP tickets. So we'll be right up by the stage. And she gets to meet and greet with them. And we're staying at a hotel with water slides and everything. And I don't want to work when I'm out there, right? So I really have to look at what my targets and goals are for this month and getting up to the end of the month. And how do I hit those targets and goals now um, with effective planning? And then the same thing for rolling into 2022. Like when in my coaching business, December and January are huge months. um, And we have a lot of, Um, little mini products that we launched during that time. So I have to make sure all of those little mini products are designed correctly, right? That they're ready, that the funnels are put together and all of that. So that weeks ahead of time, we're just ready to hit the go button. Like it's scheduled, it's ready to hit the go button. And then we can roll right into our challenge, which we're actually going to rename the CEO Freedom Bootcamp um, instead of the challenge. Cause we, I kind of feel like it's more of a bootcamp than a challenge um, at this point, but, you know, having this plan together is, is really important. And then the other thing you can do is you can communicate once you have a plan, it's really easy to communicate with other people about what your plan is. So, um, at some point I'm going to want to take a weekend just for myself, um, to, uh, do some like catch up work and stuff. And I'm able to like put that into my planner and say to John, Hey, I really want to just go veg out in a hotel for four days to get through this, you know, plan that I have here. Can you, can you handle it? And can you handle the, the traffic in our business and stuff during that time? And then he can look at his plan, right? So um, having that plan can really make a big difference in what you're doing. The other thing is too, that when you're coordinating with family and stuff, you're able to say to them, yeah, I can do that that day or no, I can't do that that day because you know what's actually in your calendar, um, what's actually in your planner, what you need to get done, what help you need, all of that. Now, the other aspect of planning out for the rest of the year, these, let me, let me just look here. So I'm giving you an accurate count, but I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and we were like, how many days to the rest of the year? Um, there's 78 days left in the year, including today. So 78 days to roll into 2021, right? So we really want to look at what are we doing with these 78 days and where's our time and our effort going to go so that when it gets to like December 26th, we're not in this like complete freak out panic that we're rolling into 2022 without a plan. So first off, what you want to do is one, decide what your goal is for the the rest of 2021. Like, what do you want to accomplish for the rest of 2021? Map that out with a to-do list and the challenge I go through this, like, how do you backtrack? You have a a big goal and then you list out all the steps that it's going to take to hit that goal. And then you just start going at it, right? Just start doing it. Then what is your goal for 2022? So when you roll into 2022, what do you want to accomplish in that year? So 2022 is a big um, year for me. 2022 is the year that I want to hit multiple seven figures. So I want to break through at least 2 million in um, 2022. So there's a lot that has to happen in order to do that. There's a lot of you know, products that have to be created, delivery that has to happen, structure that has to go in place um, to really have that happen. 
And then at the same time, I want it to be the year that my business becomes fully automated. So I've got one business, which is a direct selling business, which I want to get up to 50,000 a month. That will be my net. Like that'll be my, um, my business that covers all of my expenses and my savings and like all of that. And then all the other money that I make is for philanthropy, fun and retirement. So this year I'm 47, next year I'll be 48. I want to retire by the time I'm 55. Um, when you look at that, I need at least 10 million in the bank in order to retire at 55 to live a good lifestyle for the rest of my life. So in order to do that, I have to save a, a big chunk of money every year, right? So always looking into the future to kind of predict like, what are we, what are we creating? What are we doing? Um, and then how are we going to get there? Now, your numbers might be smaller than that. My numbers were way smaller than that when I was starting out and, you know, at different points in my life. Um, even after John and I went through bankruptcy, I was like, hey, if we could just get to 5,000 a month, I'd be so happy right now. Right. And then we got to 5,000 a month. And I was like, if we could just get to 10,000 a month. Right. And then it was like, if we could just get to 20,000 a month, that would give us the level of freedom that we want back in our life. And every step of the way, we just created plans in order to do that. Like, what would we, what do we need to create? What do we need to sell? How many people do we need on our list? What is it really going to take in order to create that momentum, create that income? So lots of really, you know, um, lots of really amazing things that you can create when you do have a plan and you stick to the plan. So planning is one of the key elements to mastering your time, mastering your production and mastering your outcomes, because you're able to look and put the steps in place of, of what you need to do and how you need to do it. So right now, like we're just looking at, and if you're in e-commerce, it's like, what is your product launch calendar look like? Right. Um, because you can't be a one product company. You just can't. Um, we deal with one product companies all the time and they come to us because their sales are circling the drain, right? Their business is about to be a faint memory in time because they haven't launched another product. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, really thinking with that as well. Okay. So, um, I want to open this up to just, you know, talk about what your plans are for the rest of 2021 and then how you're creating your plan rolling from, you know, 2021 now into 2022. Who wants to pop out here first? Hey, Emma. Hi. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I hope you can hear me because I'm on a walk, but, um, okay. Yeah, I love my law of attraction planner. Thank you so much, Shannon, for introducing me to it. And I even looked back the other day and I was like, if I hadn't filled a page in, I was really crossing myself. <laughs> so I make, I make sure that I fill it out and definitely block my time. And you know what? It's really helped me this year. It's been amazing. So anybody who hasn't got one, I definitely would recommend getting one. Um, and then the other thing that I did this year that really helped me and it's to do with planning was split uh, my year into 12 weeks and that has made a massive difference and because I planned my uh, my head you know my headline goals and then worked that into the detail I then made sure that kind of it's kept me on track and if it hasn't I've kind of if I got into overwhelm then I moved into the next quarter but made sure that then I hit the next quarter but the beautiful thing about it is when you unhide all the rows I can then see exactly what I've achieved. And I'll tell you what, I'm still shocked at how many books I've read this year, how much I've achieved in terms of a business, um, how many new customers I've got, um, just kind of where I've got to. And I think it is down to planning. I think if you don't plan, then you won't succeed. And I think that's so important. But you have hit a real key nail on the head, which I think is planning into the next year, because I've kind of planned this last quarter. But you're totally right. You kind of have to plan your whole next year of really where you want to go and how you want to succeed even further. And um, hang on. Oh, yeah, I love it, Emma. Um, and I like the idea of breaking your year up into these quarters too, 
Um, there's a, a amazing course that I went through years ago called the 90 day year. And yes. when you do that, you get so much done in so little time because you really focus on efficiency and targets and goals. And when you focus on targets and goals and you just lay it out into like, these are the steps of what I have to do in order to do that, it adds so much sanity to your business. And we can even take it out even further. You know, you can take it out two years, five years, like where do you want to be five years from now? Um, and what does that look like? And having that level of uh, momentum really does create a lot of freedom um, in your life. Like sometimes people are like, oh, but I don't want to be so structured. And it's like, but if you don't have structure, you end up actually kind of being a slave to your business and your emotions. When you have structure, you have so much more freedom because you know what you're doing when you're doing it. And then you can start that, you can stop that and you can move on to something else. So that's awesome, Emma. There is. Great. Who else wants to pop out here? Anyone else for this morning? Hi. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, um, the, the block schedule in your time has been just life changing and the planner is a must. <laughs> but, and it's hard sometimes to go back and, and look at, you know, your last quarter or whatever, you know, it's like, I didn't hit this, this. So what do I do to take charge of make those goals happen. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, that's can be daunting, you know, it can be daunting, but it can be eye opening, like, okay, get it together and make a new plan and do it. You know, that's why I was yeah. just so scared to call people, you know, just pick up the phone and call. And I was like, it's not that bad. I've not gotten shot for it yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love that. I love that. So it's like, yeah, it's, and life gets in the way and you just, you just roll with it. You know, you, there's goals I've still missed, but I've decided just to like skip this one. <laughs> I've been trying to hit, I'm just going to skip it and double up and go to the next one. So, you know, you just keep going. Yeah. And playing. That's right. You just keep going. And then you also look like whenever I, whenever I might miss a goal, I look back and I say, okay, well, am I further along than I was when I started? And if I'm further along than I was when I started, then I've definitely made progress, right? Definitely made progress. And if you can acknowledge and look at that progress, then that also gives you the ability to be objective about it, you know, not overly emotional about it and um, move on from there. So that's awesome, Lindsay. Good, anyone else wanna pop out here? Hey, Emma. Hi, sorry, I was just gonna to add to what I was saying before. The only thing that I have started to plan a bit better is uh, coming out and doing some more exercise. And that's not just taking the dog for a walk, but kind of just fitting that in because I think I started to feel a bit guilty that I kind of if I wasn't working you know you just kind of beat yourself up especially if you're doing it yourself don't you whereas I've now started to say no twice a week I need to do some exercise I've blocked that into my calendar and then I'm also doing my work because I just yeah this week I kind of just thought there's no excuses I just need to go on and do it really so um yeah that's what I've kind of also blocked out as well um, wow that's awesome and I think the, the other thing that I found this week, it was particularly this week, which was interesting. Last week, I was so busy. but And so you kind of get a bit of overwhelmed because you're so busy. And then this week, I wasn't as busy. And to be fair, it did take quite a bit of momentum to get going, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like into your week. But your talk, I think it was, was it Monday or Tuesday? Or it might have been the end of last week where you were saying about how, um, you know, um, you'd got up late and it affected the whole of your day and then I thought come on Emma you just got to get on it <laughs> so you're, re you're really prompting me to go right come on no excuses you just got to get on it so I went through my to-do list and went right what do I need to do if I'm not busy so it's kind of I know I had plenty to do so 
um yes it kind of made me get on it <laughs> that's awesome so thank you <laughs> Good. Thanks for coming out here, Emma. And okay. Who else would like to come out? Okay. Well, that's what I have for you guys today. Um, such a great conversation. Really do get your planners out. Think about what you want to accomplish by the end of the year. Start mapping that out. You know, don't just think about today and tomorrow or this week, but really think about what's going to happen between now and January 1st. Um, what are you going to create, accomplish? How are you going to end your year? Really start getting a vision for that. And then mapping that out backwards from December 31st back so that you're hitting those targets and those goals and you're not just losing the time. So have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Shannon. You're welcome. Thanks, Shannon. Brilliant as ever. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. <laughs> <laughs>